moon. Curiously enough, at the same time that we were racing to the moon, other geologists were racing to the parts of the Earth which are still least known, the deepest parts of the oceans. There was a race going on, in fact, to learn about our own planet, as well as a race to learn about our moon. Sudbury, of course, has been mentioned facetiously in connection with the moon by many people in many jokes for a long time. But there are real geological reasons for associating Sudbury with the moon. And I'll leave you to watch the program, which is a full hour of the moon and Sudbury. Long before men landed on the moon and began to explore its surface and probe its interior with seismic shock experiments, many scientists had speculated that the moon would yield evidence about the events which occurred in the early history of this part of the solar system. On the Earth, these events have left no record because during the last two and a half billion years, they've been obliterated by the activities of plate tectonics, by mountain building and by the drifting apart of continents and the creation of oceans, for example. Those expectations have been amply fulfilled. And the purpose of this program is to look at some of the conclusions which scientists have been able to draw from the almost three quarters of a ton of rock samples, the many, many thousands of photographs, and also the vast quantity of data which has been gathered by a variety of experiments during the last six or seven years. We'll also look very briefly at the real reason why Sudbury has a special place in the hearts of at least two Apollo crews. You may remember that the Apollo 16 and Apollo 17 crews, the men who were subsequently to walk on the moon, visited and trained in the Sudbury area. Much of the work to be done on the moon is geological, and the astronauts were going to be looking at the remains of rocks which had been impacted by meteorites. Many geologists believe that the Sudbury Basin is a meteorite crater. And it's for this reason that the Apollo 16 crew, complete with equipment, came here in 1971. And in 1972, the Apollo 17 crew, without their equipment, concentrated on the geology uh, here, for example, at the Onoping Falls. Uh, Jack Schmidt, the geologist who was to be on the Apollo 17 crew, was already familiar with the kind of geology to be found in the Sudbury area. The resemblance of Sudbury to the moon has a great deal more to do with its very, very interesting geology than with its scenery. But to the origin of the moon. One of the first theories regarding the origin of the moon was that the moon had been derived or broken away from the Earth, and that the Pacific Ocean, in fact, was the scar that was left. That theory has been rejected for a variety of reasons, because when tested, for example, against the chemistry and the knowledge of the density of the moon and the Earth, it simply doesn't fit. Dr. Harold Urey has been one of the um, most prominent persons in the concerned in the development of the ideas on the origin and development of the moon. And many of his ideas have stood the test of the Apollo data. In this short film extract of a talk that he gave in 1972, he explains why he rejects the suggestion that the moon broke away from the Earth. The moon is an odd object in this array. It uh, consists of about one two hundredth of the total mass of the terrestrial planets and is a very odd object, not like the others at all. Uh, it was uh, suggested by Sir George Darwin that the moon escaped from the Earth. Uh, this was made in order to account for its density. 
If uh, the moon escaped from the Earth, it should be a part of the outer part of the Earth, which has a low density, and would not uh, contain much of the core, at least, which has a high density. This uh, has proved to be difficult to accept, because the space program has uh, developed the uh, uh, chemistry of the moon in much greater detail. In the first place, it contains some very high uh, boiling silicate materials. Uh, there is a lot of uh, aluminum uh, calcium silicate, for example, known as anorthite in the outer parts of the moon. There's also some basalt and other things, but no granite has been observed. Uh, in addition to that, uh, it uh, contains little of certain volatile elements. For, for example, potassium has a low abundance relative to uranium. The potassium to uranium ratio in the moon is about 2,000 to 1, whereas in the Earth it's 10,000 to 1. In the meteorite, 60,000 to 1 or something like that. Uh, it does not seem possible that we could skim off a layer off the surface of the Earth and put it into the moon and meet these chemical conditions. It does not e seem probable or even possible that the moon escaped from the Earth. One of the physical facts uh, of gases is often overlooked. If I compress a gas, it will then expand back again. This is well known. But one that isn't so well known is this, that if I have a large mass of gas and I compress it, I get an increased amount of matter in the part that is compressed. And that has a gravitational field that attracts the material around it. And as a result of this, if it gets large enough, it will not expand again. It will snap off and become a gas sphere. And I have been led to believe by very competent people in the field that a solar nebula would not, would be gravitationally unstable. And if it is gravitationally unstable, one will have gas spheres of some kind or other formed as a result of this. If one fixes the density of the gas and its temperature just right, it will be large enough to produce a moon. Professor Runcorn and I uh, thought possibly that the moon has a cold core instead of a hot core. Uh, we thought probably the moon accumulated at uh, low temperatures with small particles containing a little magnetic, a little iron, falling through a, a cold gas and uh, forming a sphere of solid material at low temperatures. Of course, particles falling, magnetic particles falling like this in the presence of a magnetic field uh, would become more or less oriented. And when we get through, we would have a nice magnet, great big magnet, say going out to uh, a half of the radius of the moon. It would then uh, have heated up due to radioactivity in the material and as a result, it would get about what is called the Curie point, uh, named after the Curies, uh, which uh, for iron is 